What is the difference between a first position HELOC and a second position HELOC? Okay, so Fred's got a little, little confused on that. So we got HELOC. We got the first or second position. Okay, this is Fred's question. What's the difference? So let's say you have, let's say Fred has a mortgage at 300,000, okay? That's the debt, that's what he owes. But, but the value of the property is 450,000. So that means Fred, that you have 150K estimated in equity. There are a couple of ways, Fred, that you can obtain this equity. You can either do a common cash out refi, right? You can do a cash out refi where you get this 150, you now have a $450,000 mortgage at a lesser rate, similar payment maybe, maybe the payment goes up a little bit more, but now you have access to 150 grand that you can go do whatever it is that you want with it. Typically people will invest that those dollars or maybe pay off debt or something like that. It's one option. The other is you don't refi and you get, let's say a second position. So that means your HELOC is now in second place. So the mortgage is in first place. The HELOC is in second place. Let's say the bank was willing to give you a hundred grand of a home equity line, revolving line of credit, right? So it's 100K at a different interest rate. So now you have the ability to pull from this 100 grand as you please at leisure whenever you want. You can pay it back whenever you want, right? As much as you want without any uh, restrictions. And you, whatever you pay back, you can immediately pull back out again. So that's the revolving piece. It's open-ended for a period of time. So second position, literally means that if you were to default, the mortgage company would, would get the property first. If the HELOC is with a different bank, they, that bank has to deal with the first position mortgage, okay? So that means the second position HELOC, if it's with a different bank or the same bank, they're taking on additional risk in the event you default. So that's why you'll hear stories about people's HELOC getting frozen on them when markets tank, go down, or, or maybe they max out, they over leverage their 100 grand and the bank will freeze it because you could be potentially over leveraging yourself and they'll notice that, right? So that, that could be a, a, you know, one of the drawbacks of, of a home equity line of credit. At any given time, the HELOC could, oh, could freeze up on you. So that's why we practice you know, proper debt leveraging, not over leveraging ourselves, having a plan, strategic, when we do velocity banking. So second, it's in second place. I have access to a certain amount of equity at any given time for a period of time. Once that period is over, it'll turn into a loan. The idea is by then we'd be debt free. So we don't really typically worry about that. Now, HELOC in the first position, Fred, is replacing the $300,000 amortized mortgage for a $300,000 simple interest line of credit. So that's, it's like refinancing, but it costs less to refinance. So kind of like a cash out refi where you pull cash out of the property, you go do something with it. Now you have a new payment, lower interest rate typically. A regular refi is 
we renegotiate that 300000 for a lower payment, lower interest rate. The HELOC is very similar to a refi, except it costs a hell of a lot less and can potentially get you out of debt a hell of a lot faster than a refi, right? Because a refi will go, the clock turns back, we go back up to 30 years again, whereas a HELOC is a typically a 10-year or 5-year revolving period and then a 10-year amortized, so it's actually a 20-year loan, essentially. But again, the idea with Velocity Banking is that we would be out of that debt within five to seven years or less, pretty much before the revolving period is over. Mm -hmm.